going on everyone welcome back to another episode of creators cut today we're taking a look at teal crawford and i found out about him through a creator i was coaching in november december if you guys don't know i was coaching creators just kind of jumping on calls talking about video stuff and uh shout out to jacob for putting me on to teal crawford i watched his videos and like always i start watching binge watching a bunch and just get hooked amazing amazing stuff so we're just gonna get right into it let's do this the video we're gonna be covering is my favorite digital camera it's cheap mm. the first thing i notice is the colors right colors are color grading is amazing the greens are a little muted looks more on the brown side and even just this first shot bottom half uh, him holding the camera, the focus being on the camera itself. This shot over here, lower angle, looking up, it gives you a shot of the scenery and the mountains because, you know, if you shoot this at an eye line, you won't get the top here and then you don't really see how, like, grand everything is. It'll just look like, you know, background. So it's cool that it is a little bit lower looking up. If you're ever shooting and you want to show the landscape, especially mountains like that, lower angles look great. Boom. So sets it up with bringing the camera to his face, takes that shot and boom, 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 has these layers. And the cool thing about this is they actually change. These are all photographs taken with my favorite digital camera. And in today's video, I want Here. to talk in praise of that camera and to make a point that I think and it looks great just because the black frame is the thing that's keeping it, you know, in, in a form, like in this form. So it doesn't look too, too jarring as opposed to like if the frame was a different color or if it moves slightly. So he's filling in these frames with these photos and it's cool. It's giving us some time. The pacing is really, really nice. That movement too, more dynamic shot. So that initial shot of his legs holding the camera, this looks like it's in the exact same spot, but he got two shots out of it because, you know, you get that shot of the legs and then he bends down, has himself in frame and uses it for two different shots. Same angle, two different shots. We are hit with an enormous market with so many cameras that at first it will seem so Let's just talk about like set design. The reason why this looks good to me is practical light in the back gives it some life, but it also looks like there is, I don't know if it's a window or an actual light, but the light that he's using, the temperature is like a daylight because the light on his face is looking more on the cooler side. That really actually makes it, the, that practical light look even better because if the light he was using on himself was going to be yellow and then you white balance it, this would actually feel like a white light everything just looks so good the softness of it the shadows aren't too too harsh on this right side of his face i think it just leads to confusion but i'm sure there's some good reason that i as a simple consumer cannot know in comparison to the cameras these days this thing having these b-roll shots and making it look more dynamic by adding things in the foreground you see you know this the shallow depth of field makes everything look super super crisp like i said set design the thing i really really like about it is the greens and the browns look amazing in his videos. And then having this wood wooden desk adds to it. And I know it might not be a set design thing that he's like bringing in, but style plays a lot in videos, especially when you're shooting yourself. So, you know, him just putting everything together, the colors, the vibe, you know, you could kind of see it seep into the videos he makes which is really cool i believe this was released back in 2016 it's a micro four thirds camera and houses a 16 megapixel sensor he's had so many different shots of the camera it's itself you know it's like him standing there in that initial shot it hanging off off his side uh the shot just previous to this where it is you know shooting straight and the camera's lens is actually facing us and then this a top-down view with you know sunlight and then has like these cool little visual animations and the color too right so just like little things like this uh the color that he uses is like a yellow but more like a mustard yellow as opposed to a white i think this even the color the choice in color fits and flows so well with the colors that we see in the previous shots it started in japan 
before embarking on the three month trip to Japan. So the shot fisheye GoPro, I'm assuming just because you can almost tell how this, these bars bend a little bit and everything looks a little warped. That's how you could tell if it's a fisheye, but also like how wide it is. You're seeing this side of the wobby side, but you're also seeing this side of the street. That's how you could tell how, you know, how wide certain lenses are. Also, when he looks down, it gives it this almost distortion. Embarking on the three month trip. There's something about it. That's how you could tell if it's a fish. Or actually even going up like that, you could see it. Question. What gear do I take with me? I ended up taking my Pentax K1000 as my main film camera, being the rigid SLR that it is. Additionally, I took my Olympus Mu 2 170 VF with me for a flexible point and shoot option. And I also packed the Olympus XA3 to have something in between. It's so good, the B-roll he gets, right? He got shots of him putting the cameras in his bag, but also getting those shots after and lighting it properly. Because look how he's putting these in the, in the bag. It's way too dark. It's not even in the right pocket, but, you know, he cuts to it. VF. And then you could tell that there's a light. The light is now coming from up above here because you could tell, you know... That's that's where it is. In the next shot, and I also packed puts this in the front XA3. pocket, and look how dark it was in that front pocket. And I also packed right. It's so dark here. So the Olympus XA3 to this now, lighting from the top, and it now it's well lit, focusing on the Olympus logo. Him putting it in the bag is one shot, and then I don't know if it's something that he thought of before or after, but he was like, you know what? Let me reshoot these, get close-ups of the actual cameras, and let me light it properly extra step the extra mile to actually do that is what makes it so good i think i literally just shot one one photo with the sony whereas with the lumix i shot hundreds if not thousands okay the importance of music and mood is huge with anything even just think about you listening to your favorite tunes. You know, if you go to the gym and you work out, you want to listen to a certain, to, you know, something, heartbreak, any, anything. Um, he uses that for that buildup and just like what he says. Whereas with the Lumix, I shot hundreds, if not thousands. If not thousands, boom, right into it. Different vibe. You feel, you already feel like, okay, show me the photos. Now I want to see it. You got me way too hype. So that's cool great use of music when just walking around somewhere or meeting friends the chance of encountering a photo worthy scene is still high but you know me i kind of shoot everything and anything whatever i encounter as a part of documenting my life and what i see this can range from street photography to still life to random corners of a road him documenting his street photography two different ways you saw him do it with the camera as a pov and you can actually see the camera as he's shooting which already feels very cool but i love how he mixes it up with getting these shots where it isn't where he is in frame and it is a little wider you know you get to see the street you get to see him moving around and walking around like shots like this too it's just really cool that you get these two different shots doing the same thing one you're really in it this one you're kind of stepping back and you kind of feel like you're there I sadly don't remember the exact quote or who said this, but basically there's this quote that says something like, you can't beat So oh, oh, that shot was so good. Winging this and then the sun being covered by the strap of the camera and you, you getting those little bits of layers. Come on. So good. So, so good. To beat someone who's having fun. The less resistance there is for you to shoot, the more photos you're going to take and the better you're going to become. So as mediocre I love that. Old, my beloved Lumix There's a couple shots in here that he has where it is the sky, you know, you see just the sky and it looks great. But here there's something about framing it within the trees and I can only imagine him looking around and being like, hey, is this going to be a good shot? Gets in there and just, it, it puts you in a place, right? It makes you actually feel like, okay, now you know what the surrounding looks like, and we were not even there. I remember realizing this while walking around Shinjuku in Tokyo, with a couple friends just chatting and shooting at the same time. The camera didn't feel like a burden to carry while also chatting with friends, and in these evenings, I shot some photos that I personally... See, there's something about, I feel like street photographers, the compositions that they have... Uh, and they're just their eye for a lot of things. It's it's crazy because you look at composition, composition like this within the umbrella looks amazing. Obviously, the composition is is great. 
Uh, you, there's a lot of lines, especially when you're out in street photography. But I think the real thing is like capturing movement, emotions, people. It's different all the time. And it's like it's like every frame tells a story. So I think like if you really, really want to get good at composition about uh, looking for stories or like interesting people, like just street photography is crazy. You really have to be out there in your element. It's really tough for a lot of people to be shooting people and just like taking these crazy shots and just you're always looking around. Uh, but building that eye for like cinematography, ugh, what a way to do it. It isn't as powerful as the Pentax. However, it does give me that push, that feeling of enthusiasm. And that is what makes this camera so powerful to me personally and why, despite it being old and very mediocre. Adding that shot, that shot was really, really cool because, you know, you can hear, he left in the audio, you can hear him talking. You don't know what he's saying. And then the camera kind of is, is shaky and then kind of just goes down. But I don't think a lot of people would think to add that in. I feel like everyone nowadays is so much more about like getting the perfect framing, you know, walking into frame, doing all these things, you know, and, and just it has to be on a tripod. Some of these shots that he's getting is like, yeah, they're really composed really well, just like looking at this. But then th those moments, especially at the end here, he has a lot of those real moments where it feels like you're there. So if you guys enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, share this with anyone you think would enjoy it. If you guys like this video, I think you guys would like this one. Go watch it next. Take it easy. Peace.